Hi, this is Swapnil Bhartia, and we are here at Voice Summit in New Jersey. And today we have with us Anil Lewis, your executive director of the Blinds Initiative at the National Federation of the Blind. That's correct. Perfect. So first of all, uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming here. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Right. Uh, when we look at uh, today's uh, technology world, you know, it's driven by technologies. We have smartphones and all those things. Uh, so. Okay, let's let's just step back a bit. Okay. Let's talk about the Federation itself. Okay, love to, love yeah, talking about well, the Federation. What does the Federation do and how you got associated with that? Okay, well, the National Federation of the Blind is an organization that knows that blindness is not the characteristic that defines you or your future. And every day we raise expectations for blind people because we realize it's those low expectations that create obstacles between blind people and our dreams. And we wholeheartedly believe that you can live the life you want and blindness is not what holds you back. So when I went blind in 1989, I thought my life was over. I didn't have the skills that I had because I thought I did not. Uh, but the National Federation of the Blind helps blind people understand that there are alternative skills that allow us to be productive, fully participating members of society. So I was encouraged to learn how to read Braille and learn how to use a long white cane and how to use assistive technology and take care of myself and manage my home. So it helped me reclaim my life. And that's how I got involved. And I'm continuing to pay it forward by per actively participating in the organization. And we're a nationwide organization of blind people we have affiliates in all 50 states, plus the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico. Uh, we have espoused to have a, a membership of 50,000, and it's mostly volunteers. And uh, we, 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 scan, we span the scope of blindness services from, I like to say, from birth to earth, or from womb to tomb. So everything that impacts a blind person from the moment they enter this world to the time they leave it, we try to get active in making sure that the quality of life is present and the ability for blind people to fully participate exists. And it's a... It's a uh a non-profit organization. You are not yeah. associated with government organizations or anything like that. Correct. We're a non-profit organization. Mm -hmm. uh, we raise our money. We're very fiscally responsible. We have a whole city block that we own in Baltimore. Uh, it's all paid for. There's no debt. So as a non-profit organization, we like to make sure that people who donate to us recognize that their money goes directly to programs and projects that impact blind people. Right. And, and now let's move to the tech realm. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we are living in a world where we have smartphones uh, and all those devices. The, uh, but uh, I had a friend uh, whose wife was blind, and you know she used to use the old school phones, you know, where you can feel the t keypads. Yeah. So when the first Android and iPhone came out, in the early days there was not access, no accessibility back in those days, you know, the first phones. Mm -hmm. So it was hard for her. But now things have changed. These devices are becoming more and more accessible. So can you talk about the evolution of technology itself to help people with some disabilities? Sure. I would not call it disability, to be honest. It's, it's, disability is fine. Yeah. It's all about identity. You don't let it define you. Like, I don't You're let right. blindness define me, but it is a characteristic that I have. So I'm blind, meaning I can't see. I'm black. I'm tall. I have short to no hair. So it's all just a characteristic. So we don't let it define or limit us. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a very good point. It's interesting because technology, of course, is a major pillar of what we try to do in the National Federation of the Blind to make sure blind people can be equal because if you can't use technology today, you can't be competitive. But back in those days, those buttons that we used to press were a lot more accessible than some of the technology today. So uh, dialing a phone was a lot easier from rotary to push button. But when we re moved into the touchscreen world, it, it started complicating things. So progressing through the evolution of technology, the biggest uh, kind of uh, seed change for us was in the aspect of actually accessing computer information. So when voice, speaking of the voice summit, uh, voice access was enabled in computers, meaning that my computer could talk to me and read to me all the information that you would visually see on the screen. That's when I really was able to start beginning exploiting the technology. But we have to remain vigilant as people with disabilities because accessibility seems to be a secondary concern. The, the introduction of speech access to computer technology back in the days of DOS was really a sea change because it helped blind individuals access information that you would see visually on the screen through speech so our computers would talk to us. Uh, when we evolved into Windows, that environment became inaccessible. It took us, oh, I'd say a few years before we became active. So traditionally, well, historically, we've always been kind of an afterthought around accessibility and making sure that the devices can be accessible. But you mentioned iPhone earlier, so Apple really did a tremendous uh, thing in the development of their iPhone. What they did is they created a device that off the shelf was accessible to me as a blind person, and it's the same device that you as a sighted person would use. We just turn on the accessibility features. And this, I think, is demonstrative of the real impact of accessibility. So not only do I access the same device, so I don't have to buy anything extra or any peripheral piece, 
it also enhanced the device for anyone else that's sighted. You know, I give examples of how speech that makes things accessible for blind people are really beneficial to sighted people as well. The one I really like to use is the, uh, the talking GPS devices. Well, we wanted to access that GPS information just like the sighted people. So those GPS devices started talking. And now if you ride in a car today and people are using the GPS devices, very few of them are actually reading the maps. As a matter of fact, reading a map is kind of a lost art. A lot of people don't even know how to read the maps anymore. Everybody's using the speech access. So it's a way that demonstrated by making the device accessible to me, or we call it non-visually accessible to me, it makes it accessible and, more be and makes it better for everyone else that's using the device as well. It enhances that device. I know I was in China a few uh, months ago, and there everybody was using voice. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons was literacy, you know? Not everybody was literate. And second is that, it's just easier, faster to just say things than to find the menu and be able to type. Mm -hmm. So as you, you rightly said, that if the accessibility is not just limited to certain people, it just improves the overall experience. Yes, and you, it, you mentioned something, that then, and this is the, 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 the conflict that we have with the introduction of technology. Literacy, you're right, those devices do help individuals who may not be literate. But in the school systems today, we're fighting to make sure that blind kids are still taught to be literate. Uh, a lot of school systems think, well, they don't need to learn how to spell and grammar, but everyone should yes. and, and everyone needs to. So we have to balance that. But you're absolutely right. The technology through voice allows not only people who are not as literate, but it also helps for foreign language exchange. Mm -hmm. So you can speak to a device in a foreign language and it can operate just as effectively as it would if you were speaking English as opposed to speaking Chinese. You mentioned kids, and this is something interesting because I have two kids. One is three and one is seven. And of course, the three-year-old not, cannot type. or I mean, he, he has not started going to school. Mm -hmm. But he talks to Google. He's a Google. And he, he plays the song he wants. Yes. He asks jokes. Mm -hmm. And he asks questions. You know, Google, how far is move? Yeah. And Google tells the answer. Yes. Yes, and he those will, are the biggest he, impacts. Unless until he's seven or eight years old, he will not be able to type these things. But so, so you're absolutely, so it's, people don't understand, but you know, it just makes technology more accessible mm -hmm. to everybody. Yes. yes, and there's so much information out there that's so easily accessed now through voice. Right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are here at this voice summit. Mm -hmm. What are you doing here? Well, I'm here to make sure that my voice as a person with a disability is heard by the many developers. I think this voice summit is phenomenal, the way that it brings uh, big major corporations and a lot of developers into the space to really talk about that next use of this technology. But I also want to make sure that the voices of people with disabilities are heard during that design process. So we've, as the National Federation of the Blind, we've experienced a lot of uh, instances where the well-intended developer comes to us with this wonderful app that they developed that's going to help blind individuals. But because they didn't consult with us in the beginning, the app is really not useful at all. They may have thought that it might have been helpful, but had they talked with us prior, they would have been able to use that talent and those resources to develop something that really was substantive. So I'm just trying to make sure that I integrate myself into this mix and make sure that my voice, which represents the members of the National Federation of the Blind, is heard and we can encourage many of them to partner with us and collaborate with us so that we can balance their expertise with our expertise. You already mentioned that uh, uh, when you got the iPhone off the shelf, it was very accessible. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm curious that, uh, what happened with Apple that, you know, they designed it. So uh, I'm well, sure you, you, you did invest some, you know, to understand it. Or yes. what I want to understand is when companies develop these technologies, is accessibility an afterthought? Or, yes, or, unfortunately, yes. And even with the Apple, I mean, there, there was a little bit of, I'll, I'll say for this form, encouragement from the Federation for them to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, but they recognized the business case of it, right? So it wasn't uh, a matter of, us forcing them to do it and continue to force them to do it. Once they realized what we were asking for and they realized how easy it was to implement, I mean, they've been the industry leader in that space. So Google is moving toward uh, creating a more accessible experience with the Android devices. And uh, we continue to partner with all of them, the Googles, the Apples, the Microsofts, the Amazons of the world, to make sure that we are actively participating in the development and the included accessibility as they continue to evolve their product line. And, and I so sometimes just, it is a little bit of a push, but right, right, we do right. it in a way that hopefully develops into really good partnerships. And talking about Apple, uh, one of our friends, you know, he's, he's uh, partially deaf mm -hmm. and he uses FaceTime. Mm -hmm. And I said, why do you use FaceTime? Why don't you use Skype or Hangout? He said, because the FaceTime, the, the good thing is even when you're low bandwidth connection, you get very, because he's, he reads lips. Mm -hmm. So if the visual is not clear or if there is uh, latency, he cannot read. Yeah. So, so these are small, small things. 
Right. People don't understand, but they are critical from the point of view of accessibility. Person with disabilities, exactly. Yeah, and yes. the reverse is true as well. I would imagine your person, uh, your friend who is deaf, uh, the voice input feature of the devices is also very beneficial. So I could, because I don't know how to sign, right? And if there was a person who could not actually read lips, I could actually speak into my phone mm -hmm. and it would voice dictate and then they could actually physically read mm -hmm. what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. the voice on both ends is really impactful. Yes, yes. Creates, creates an opportunity for us to really engage in our communities. We, we, we talked about, you know, that uh, it should be part of, you know, from the development process, not an yes. afterthought. Mm -hmm. we, we talked about uh, how the voice space is changing, you know, things for this. Any other closing thoughts you have before the, we wrap this up? Well, I, I think it's important to highlight the fact that uh, as we integrate it more and it becomes more second nature, uh, that's the way we want it. We don't want to be singled out as needing a different device or overly emphasizing that what we require is a burden because it's not. What we are in encouraging developers to do is do good coding because good coding is accessible coding so it's not an additional piece that they have to do it's just doing it right uh, introducing hardware that's accessible it's not anything over uh, burdensome unless you do it after the fact a friend of mine says you know it's like building a 20-story skyscraper right and then you built it and you look and you're wonderful it's a wonderful looking building and then you think to yourself you know it would be good if we would have put in an elevator you know, after the fact, the elevator is going to be cost prohibitive to really introduce into that structure, although it's needed. But if you do it in the beginning and in the planning, it wouldn't have added any additional cost to the building uh, if you do it right. And the same with accessibility. It doesn't offer any additional cost burden to the development, but it actually enhances the product. And not just for blind people or people with disabilities, but it enhances that product with everyone. There are so many examples of how when technology, whether it be the app or hardware devices, have been made accessible for people with disabilities, that people who don't have disabilities still benefit from that particular design. So that's our real goal, to find that way that we can introduce uh, components and uh, strategies that make devices accessible for us from the beginning and enhance the experience for everyone. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to, before we wrap this, I will ask a personal question. Mm -hmm. uh, you may choose to not answer it, but uh, first of all, the story of your name, Anil, because that mm -hmm. sounds more like Indian name. Yes, it's an Indian name. My mom was watching a movie. I forget which one it was. It was South Pacific or Bali High or something like that. And there was a character named Anil in the movie. So she watched it until the uh, trailers so that she could tell how to spell it. And I didn't realize what it meant or where it came from or the nationality until I was 19 or 20 but it means cool summer breeze, some have told me. And in Turkish, some have told me that it means memorable. So I'm very happy with it, <laughs> very yeah, happy it, with it. It fits very well with your personal as well. Yeah, well, I yeah. appreciate that. Uh, yeah. So once again, Anil, thank you so much for talking to me today. My pleasure. And I would actually love to just, you know, keep in touch uh, to, to see the work that the Federation is doing because uh, we live in a world, as you rightly said, yeah. it's not just about, you know, a certain people, it's for everybody. Yeah, and I encourage people who want to know more about the National Federation of the Blind, to please visit nfb.org and uh, you can find, like I said, everything about blindness from birth to earth. Thank you. Thank you.